A particle moves along a straight line so that its velocity v in meters per second after t seconds is given by v of t equals e to the power of cos t plus 3 sine t from 0 to 5 seconds. Find the value of t when the particle is at rest. Find the acceleration of the particle when it changes direction. Find the total distance traveled by the particle. Now, this is from the IBDP um, formula booklet. So I, I assume that you would have known that this is what you'd have to look for. So I included it in there for you. Okay, so what we're going to do is first of all plot this function okay so let's just put use this button make sure that e is bold so we it knows that it's referring to not a variable but the the constant Euler's constant and let's do cos x plus 3 sine x okay now notice the domain is 0 to 5 so just you can ignore anything to the left of the y-axis and it only goes to about right there, 5. So find the value when, of t when the particle is at rest. That means the velocity is 0. So we have to find this x-intercept right there. And we can do that by going to analyze graph. Find the 0 of the function from here to there. And it's 3.27. Now, because the IB wants you to have it to three significant figures, um, this would be rounded correctly, but you may need to use that number later and you might want more digits of that. So not a bad idea to um, go to your settings and maybe increase that so you can see more decimal places. Okay, so maybe we can use that for later. All right, now part B is find the acceleration of the, and by the way, this is the answer, 3.27 for uh, part A. So part B, find the acceleration of the particle when it changes direction. So you just have to notice that it changes direction when the velocity changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So it goes, say, from left to right or from right to left because it's on a straight line. Um, okay, so it's right at this point. But the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. Um, so we just, and you can see that right here in this formula, the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So what we need to do is take the derivative um, and then find out what that is at this time. Okay, now that's really easy with this calculator because you can go to menu, you can go to analyze graph dy by dx at, at this x intercept right there. And it's giving us negative 2.93. So we can double check that by simply, let's, let's tab, let's take the derivative of the original function, which we can do from here. Okay, and we want to take the derivative of the original function, which is stored in the variable right here, var. Okay, and this is in terms of x. So hit enter, and let's just check this. Okay, let's check to see if when we substitute 3.265 into this function, if it gives us uh, that answer. So we can go to menu, analyze graph, um, and, oh, sorry, trace. Okay, and we can just press up or down to switch which curve we're we looking at. We're looking at the red one. And then simply just type in this number, 3.265, 3 points. So it's letting x equal 3.26548. And you can see it's giving us negative 2.9312, which is right down here. Okay, another way we could have done that is if we go to uh, the screen, notice that our variables are now stored. So this is the original function that we plotted. So you can find the y-intercept, for example, by just substituting in 0 right there, and it's e. Okay, and notice that the derivative function is also here. So we can find the y-intercept by doing the same thing. That's of the derivative function. Okay, so we wanted to find the acceleration when the particle's at rest, which was, this is the acceleration function, and we can substitute in the number that we had from here. We could copy and paste this, okay, um, this control C, and that could work. I'm just gonna memorize the first few digits, 3.26548. 3.265, okay, and it's negative 2.93 to three significant figures. Okay, so that's another way to do that. Okay, so part C, find the total distance traveled by the particle. Now, notice that is, uh, there's a formula right here, and notice the difference between distance and displacement. Distance, you need to use the absolute value, um, just as a reminder, because for displacement, the positive and negative, they will kind of cancel each other out if you... Um, don't put the absolute value. So we want to add the what's above and below the x-axis, and we can do that by using the absolute value. So simply just come over here. Um, we can do, we 
can use this button. Where is it? Right over here. Okay, and from zero to five of, we need the absolute value now. So let's use this. And we will do the original function, which is f1 of x, tx, and it is 12.7. Um, yeah, and that should be everything there. We can also just play around maybe a little bit here. I am going to hide that. Okay, so we're just looking at the blue function. So notice that if you wanted to, you could have done the, say, the integral from 0 all the way to 5. Okay, and it's giving us this number, okay, which is 7.33. So notice our, our answer was 12.66. So what's the difference there? Well, let's just do the other one, which is a uh, displacement. Okay, so 0 to 5, no absolute value this time. F1 of x dx. And you can see that 7.33 is this answer. So what it's doing is it's taking the above the x-axis as a positive value, below it as a negative. Um, and when adding that together, it makes it smaller, which doesn't make sense for a total distance, but it does for a displacement. Okay, so to be clear, the answer is 12.7 for this because it's total distance travel and we need the absolute value. And that's that.